Hello, this is Stacy Coleman, and welcome to this year's first edition of Channel 34 News. On December 6th, the eve of the third Superpower Summit, over 200,000 people traveled to Washington, D.C. on behalf of Soviet Jews who are not permitted to emigrate from the USSR. Many noted politicians such as George Bush, Thomas Kane, and Ed Koch were on hand to denounce the Soviet policy. SPF ETV's own David Shaw was on location to cover this international event. And to sign a petition. Okay, hold on. There you go. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is Texas. We have a uh, charter plane full of people that flew up here today to uh, make our statements to Mr. Gorbachev when he comes here that uh, whatever else he wants to talk about, we want to talk about freedom for all people. So let the uh, Jews and other people of the Soviet Union go. From Dallas in Chicago, from all around the country, let people know that we care. There are people that are being persecuted and don't have the right to live the kind of life they want and to leave the country to live another life somewhere else. So that's why this great gathering is taking place today. What's the prevalent theme? Well, the theme is in part to show what freedom means and how we have the freedom to be here and assemble and speak in our capital for those who don't have that freedom. I think it's a message to the Soviet leader how important this is. And also it's going to be great encouragement to the refuseniks and the other Jews in the Soviet Union to still hear about this. Now, you were there a few years ago. What was the time at that time, and who did you meet? Well, I was there at the end of October 1985, just before the summit in Geneva between Mr. Reagan and Mr. Gorbachev. And there was hope then that in that meeting that there may be some positive developments for human rights. But many of them uh, who had been struggling for years, they said, we've seen these summits come and go. And uh, the hope was expectant, but many of those people were tired. Well, what, what's different now? Why will the Soviets listen to that? Well, one thing is we have a young Soviet leader. In the past, the Soviet leaders have been older. So we know that with this leader, what he decides on this issue, he may be in power for 20 or 30 years, and maybe he'll change. He wants tre treaties with the U.S., he wants economic trade with the U.S., and he may, therefore, because of those needs, finally honor up our human rights. this is of the commitment that has drawn you by the tens of thousands of Christians and Jews from every corner of our country to show support for our brothers and sisters still yearning to breathe free half the world away. Some of them have been allowed out, but until they are all allowed out, there is no glasnost. We still have to make the demand that these people, Jews and Christians, who have a place to go, that they be given their rights to leave the Soviet Union. Mr. Gorbachev, our message to you today is that Holocaust history will not repeat itself. This time it is different. This time we speak with strength and we speak with numbers. This time the community is organized. This time there is no guilt of silence. This time there is a resounding roar. As you are well aware of, this year's first semester is quickly drawing to a close, which means midterm exams are right around the corner. This is this year's midterm exam schedule. On the 25th of January, we have period one and followed by period 10. On January 26th, we have period two followed by period four, five, or five, six. The next day, we have January 27th, which is period three followed by period 6, 7, or 7, 8. The last day, we have period 9, 
followed by any makeups that you need. As most of you know, SPFHS <coughs> held a toy and clothing drive for those in West Memphis, Arkansas, who were devastated by the tornado. The school's JR ROTC lent their services to load, unload, and organize the donated goods. The SPF ETV camera crew was there. This is Tony Quitelli for Channel 34 News, and I'm here with Mr. John Wyatt. As many of you know, there was a tornado that hit West Memphis, Arkansas. And Mr. Wyatt thought of an idea of how to bring gather clothes from people around Scotch Plains to send them down to the people in Arkansas for Christmas. What inspired you with this idea? Well, the uh, television reports of um, the uh, disaster, I just kind of thought it would be a nice thing to do at Christmas time. Matter of fact, we're getting clothing not only from residents of Scotch Plains and Fanwood, but from surrounding communities due to the newspaper articles. And what are, how, have, how did you organize this? Well, uh, a little help from the, um, the media center staff and some of the other teachers, and um, with help from um, Dr. Hallett's office, the superintendent's office, and permission from Dr. Regal, he managed to give us the room, and uh, uh, the public relations uh, people over at the uh, board office. We got the whole thing together, we got it in the newspaper, and uh, as you can see, if you look around you, the results are behind us. Have you talked to anybody in Arkansas? Yes, I've spoken to the mayor's office in Arkansas. I've spoken to um, Reverend Forrest Dunlap, who is coordinating the relief drive uh, for the uh, First United Methodist Church in Memphis, um, West Memphis, Arkansas. Uh, I've also spoken to the um, ABC affiliate in Memphis, Tennessee, uh, which is right across the river. And I've spoken to um, uh, the West Memphis uh, Daily Newspaper. What is their reaction to this? They think it's just a wonderful thing. Um, I really don't think it's such a big deal. I just thought it'd be nice to help people at Christmas time. What do you think the reaction is of most of the people in our community? Uh, uh, they're in a very giving um, spirit, being Christmas to begin with, but I feel that even if it wasn't Christmas, they'd be in a giving spirit. Okay, I think it's a very great idea. I hope everybody does contribute, and thank you, and Merry Christmas to you and Merry everybody Christmas in our community. Merry Christmas to everybody out there. The staff and students of SBF ETV would like to thank all those who donated clothing and toys, and especially the Harold Ives Trucking Company for providing transportation to West Memphis, Arkansas. Another year has come to an end, and SPFHS is in a new year with new hopes, new dreams, and new resolutions. I was on location earlier to get some of these revolutions from some students here at Spiffy High. I'm here with Elizabeth Lambert. And what New Year's resolutions do you have for the 1988 year? Well, I graduate in 88, so that's my goal, to graduate and have a happy life. Is that all? Yeah. I'm with Jimmy Grant. Jimmy, do you have any New Year's resolutions? Yes. And what are they, please? To get all A's in my classes. And anything else? Um, stop smoking. Sorry. Okay. And I'm here with Stephanie and Erica. Stephanie, what New Year's resolutions do you have for 1988? Oh, <laughs> I can't, well, to get my voice back and I don't do better in school and graduate. That's good. What about you, Erica? I was thinking of, oh, getting my car fixed. My car broke down, so, you know, I hope it's fixed by New Year's because it is a rust bucket and hopefully it will be <laughs> fixed. And I guess not to give my mom so much trouble. I'm going to try and help her out instead of being against her so much. And basically, That's sweet. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. This is Stacy Coleman on location with Tony Critelli, senior. What New Year's resolutions do you have, Tony, for the new year coming up? Uh, I don't want to slack enough of my schoolwork. I'm, not, I'm going to try to avoid getting senioritis. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> That's about it. OK, thank you very much. Back to the studio. For the past holiday season, the SPFHS Italian Club, under the supervision of Joanne Kasher, held an Italian party, and the members celebrated with pizza for everyone. Channel 34 has some footage.
Thank you. And now to Jean for more hard news. Thanks, Stacy. In December, two veteran teachers at SPFHS retired, Irene Grubman and Arlene Resnick. Grubman worked as a teacher for 23 years, 22 of them in the Scotch Plains Fanwood District at Terrell and the High School. Resnick started as a phys ed teacher and eventually became a guidance counselor at SPFHS. She moved on to live in Arizona after her retirement. Karen McDermott, a teacher in the science department at the high school, has taken over Resnick's guidance duties. In the high school's early childhood class, Santa showed up before Christmas to visit the preschoolers. Tia McMillan has this report on the holiday festivities. Okay. Hi, I'm here with, what's your name? I just see Trader. And? Christina. Christina? Hi, did you see Santa Claus? Yes. You did? How about you? What do you think about Santa? He's pretty good, and I like him. You like him? Oh, you do? So you've been good, huh? Yes. You want Santa Claus to be good to you, too? Yeah. I see he brought you a toy. You didn't open it yet? I want to open the home. Oh, How yeah. was it working with the children for Christmas? Well, it was really exciting to see like what they thought of um, Santa Claus and presents and gift giving to their family and stuff. Mm -hmm. And how did you prepare them for all of this? We made Christmas ornaments and we made some things for Hanukkah and we made um, like pictures and stuff of what they wanted. They seem really excited. Do you think they really believe in Santa? I think they do, yeah. <laughs> this is Tia McMillan for 34 News and now back to the studio. Tia, following up on the Christmas story, went back out on the scene to ask students about their favorite Christmas gifts. Her question, what was your favorite Christmas gift? Channel 34 News, what was your favorite Christmas gift? Having the joy of the world to be around. Her friends over there, just the joy of them being around was the favorite Christmas gift. What was your favorite Christmas gift? The diamond ring I got from my boyfriend. Oh, a diamond ring? What about you? Ski, my skis. Is there anything for Christmas that you wanted that you didn't get? No, I got a lot of surprises. I wasn't... So Santa was good to you? Yeah. And you? Basically got everything. Oh I'm here with Carla Williams. Linda Neal. What was your favorite Christmas gift, Carla? A diamond ring. A diamond <laughs> ring? Or who'd you get a diamond ring from? My boyfriend. <laughs> oh, and what was your favorite gift? <laughs> um, a bubblegum ball machine. It's real tall. <clears throat> A bubblegum bar. Yeah, oh, really I see. Yeah. Was there anything for Christmas that you wanted that you didn't get? A fur coat. <laughs> a fur coat. My Lamborghini. What was your favorite Christmas gift? Uh, my robe chain and my name. Oh, and your name? <laughs> I got a gold yes. chain. Thicker than Jen's. <laughs> Is there anything that you wanted for Christmas that you didn't get? Answering service. Oh, answering money. service. What did you get? Money. That was your favorite gift? Yep. What about you? I got this coat, money, and clothes. Oh, this was Santa good to you? Santa was very good. Santa could have been better. Also, just before the Christmas break, the Humanities classes sponsored a Hawaiian luncheon. The classes are instructed by Mr. Call and Mr. Mason, and the luncheon featured various Hawaiian fare. Here's some scenes from that affair. Now, here's Elizabeth Zippern with Arts and Ten Entertainment News. Thanks, Jean. On December 19th, the SBFHS Raider Show Band performed for halftime for, for over 70,000 fans at Giant Stadium. Recently, Marsha Sunko had a chance to interview Mr. Tutoriello, director of the group, about how the band prepared for the show. Here's the interview with Marsha. I'm Marsha Sanko for 34 News, and I'm here with Mr. T, director for the Raider Show Band, and he's here to tell us about his recent trip with the band to Giant Stadium. 
Hi, Mr. T. Hi, Marcia. Pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, I wanted to ask you first, um, how were you selected to go uh, for, the, for the marching band to attend the Giants game? Well, three years ago, we did the Giants halftime as well as the Generals uh, opening game. And uh, they saw us, really, they saw us at a Westfield game f to do that presentation. And we asked to be invited back, and they said they would put us on a selection type list that they have. And when our turn came up, they would give us a call. And our turn came up this year, and there we went. Oh, okay. And you went this past Saturday. How did the, how did the trip there go? Oh, very well. There was, uh, I believe, 56,000 people so in attendance. Um, we got to be on the field as far as a pregame mm -hmm. warm up, and then after halftime, uh, I believe it was either Debbie or Diane Jung mm -hmm. actually got knocked over by Phil Sims, and <laughs> really? he got to help them up. Uh, let me see, Steve Walker um, actually talked to Lawrence Taylor. I think mm -hmm. Lawrence said yo. <laughs> so it was a it was a real unique trip, I think, for the kids just to play in front of that many people, mm -hmm. but also for. Uh, them to be on the field with the players just to realize how big some of those guys really are. Yeah. I know it was something for me to see some of them coming out of the locker room because we were on the field when they came out. Mm -hmm. And you had to, since this was not in the band season, you had to prepare for it. Um, how did that, what, what did you have to do to change your schedules and how did that work into your schedule? We had to put actually, we put, uh, I guess, two more practices into it. But during the last November mm -hmm. season, the last week, we started putting little things in to prepare the kids, how they would come out pregame and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the brass players had to make sure, make sure their oil, oil was in their valves and everything or else it would all freeze up because mm -hmm. it got to around. It had to be close to 30 degrees on the field. Mm -hmm. But we did luck out with the weather. It seemed like a pretty nice day. Mm -hmm. How was the response from the actual Giants fans? What I, what I heard is, I mean, what I could see because I was on the, the press box side is that they did stay in the stands and they watched <laughs> the presentation. But a few of the others like Ron Crumps and uh, Ellie Crumps and uh, Dr. Hallett were up in the stands and they thought it was very well received by the fans around there who have never seen a band our size. Mm -hmm. uh, if you caught the Courier, the Courier put a nice picture of us in the paper on Sunday, uh, just putting the Raiders show band. Um, I heard Z100 the next morning really? was talking about us. They said the game was a little boring, but, but you should have seen that band at halftime. They were making circles and triangles <laughs> and everything else. So it was nice. We got some nice publicity wow. out of it. That's good. I'm glad you had a good time. Um, are you looking forward to going back? Uh, okay. I'm going to write a letter right now and just explain to them how uh, uh, what a really highlight to our season it is, and we'd love to be invited back mm -hmm. for Giants or a Jets halftime. That would be great. Okay. Well, we wish you luck in getting called back and, uh, and have a really good spring season. And uh, thanks a lot for being here, okay? And now back to the studio. Thanks, Marcia. Before the Christmas break, the choral groups of SPFHS, Park, and Terrell Middle Schools each held their annual holiday concerts. Here's a tape of their performances. At SBFHS's all school production was small, the show still went on with various acts by band, by band Ra Random Access, singers Peter Terry, Nicole Lavelle, and Carolyn Jackson. The modern dance group was also on hand in the evening's activities. Here's a brief clip of some of the acts.
On December 23rd, ventriloquist Alan Semak performed for students in the library at Park Middle School with his two puppets, Eugene and his uncle. Here's a tape of the performance. And I have all these kids get in our room. <laughs> Not in our room. We're here at the school. We're here. We're doing a show. Huh? We're here doing a show. I said we're doing a show. Don't you yell at me, you twit. <laughs> Watch me when I sing. All right, I'm going to open. Watch me when I sing. I'm going to give you an example. Can you really sing? I can sing. Watch me. Singers run in my family. They should. Yes, she should. Yes, with a big voice like that, uh, you must sing the bass. No. <laughs> you don't sing the bass. No. You sing the baritone. No. Let me get this straight. Yeah. Yeah, you. Uh, you don't sing the bass. No. You don't sing the baritone. No. What part do you sing, kid? Tap. Let's have a nice big. <laughs> Miss Colhane's ninth grade gifted English class practiced their acting skills when they read Dickens and the characters and his characters in December. Here's some tape. Each student read Oliver Twist and Great Expectations, then chose a character from the book to portray. Here are some of the students portraying their characters. You have made my character so bizarre, no wonder why I have no friends. It just makes your character more interesting and vivid. You see, you have to have some quality or something about you that makes you stand out from all the rest. The reader must be curious about this mystery of the stop plots, the rotten wedding cake, the dark house. This interests the reader to read on and become more involved in the story. On Tuesday, December 15th, the entire third grade at School 1 attended a performance of the Nutcracker Ballet at the Ritz Theatre in Elizabeth. The students enjoyed the holiday performance. And this month on Critics Corner, Roger Gurmanger gives his retrospective view on 1987 and his top 10 album picks of the year. Now Roger with more. Hi, and welcome back to Critics Corner for this month. I'm Roger Germiner. You know, 1987 has come and gone. And, of course, at the end of every year, there's something everyone looks forward to. A list of the top whatevers, and however many, of 1987. Lists on the top people, the top books, the top movies. But this month, I'd like to focus our attention on possibly the most important list of all. The one list that the entire world balances upon. That list is the top 100 albums according to Rolling Stone magazine for 1987. And for Craig's Corner this month, we're going to take a look at the top 10 albums from that list. In at number 10 is Genesis with Invisible Touch, the English supergroup known worldwide. Possibly their best work after their self-titled album from 1982. At number nine is Steve Winwood, Back in the High Life, the album that put him in the high life and got him, quite possibly, the largest audience of his career. At number eight is Anita Baker, with Rapture. That's it, I don't have anything to say about the album or her. And at number seven is White Snake with the self-titled album, White Snake. Yes, the band with the gorgeous Tony Katane, who dances around on top of their Jaguars in every video. By the way, she and lead singer David Coverdale, formerly of Deep Purple, are married. That's a big disappointment for everyone. In at number six is the Beastie Boys with License to Ill. Yes, the bad boys of rap strike again, stirring up trouble and fighting for the right to party wherever they go. At number five is Paul Simon with Graceland, Paul's best album, at least according to the American Society of Composers and Producers. They gave him an Emmy for it. In at number four is Whitney Houston with Whitney, quite possibly one of the greatest voices to come along in a long time. In at number three is U2 with The Joshua Tree, the latest release from the group of Irishmen who took America by storm during their last tour. Look for them, look for a movie of them in 1988. In at number two is Michael Jackson, Bad, the estranged talent who released the album late in the year, 
and had the fan power to go to two. One thing, Michael, you'll never look like Diana Ross, no matter how much plastic you put on your face. At number one, of course, is Bon Jovi, the Slippery When Wet, the largest album of their career. These Jersey boys even top Springsteen, who only made it to 16 with Tunnel of Love. That's the top 10 albums for 1987. I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you. So for Cruise Corner, I'm Roger Germander, wishing you a happy new year. Back to you, Liz. Thanks, Roger. And now we'll pause for our special Bicentennial Constitutional Minute. You, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. I, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of the Presidency of the United States. The office of the Presidency of the United States. And will, to the best of my ability, preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. The Constitution, the words we live by. There was a time when an 18-year-old couldn't vote. A time when there was no meaningful way for young adults to express their opinions. What changed that? The 26th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution, the words we live by. And now here's Dave Wooten with Raider Sports. Dave? Thanks, Gene. On December 18th, the winter sports pep rally was held. Coaches were allowed to bring out their star players as well as just mention their team in general. Among the teams that were introduced were the bowling team, the boys basketball team, the winter track team, and as you can see, the cheerleaders. The wrestling team got off to a big start, winning over Irvington, but then lost in a tight match versus Westfield. The swimming team also got off to a very good start this year, jumping off to a 3-1 record. Here standing by with Captain Tracy DeFrancesco is on location reporter Tony Critelli. This is Tony Critelli for Channel 34 News, and I'm here with one of the, one of the captains of the swim team, Tracy DeFrancesco. How are you doing? Okay. Uh, could you explain the events in swimming? Okay, um, there's, the, it first has, there's two relays. There's the medley relay, which it consists of fly, back, breast, and free. And there are four swimmers from that together. And then there's the free relay. There's a 500 free, which is the long distance event. And there's um, 100 fly, 100 breast, 100 back, 100 free, 50 free. And I am, <laughs> that's it. Which are you in? Um, well, we get switched around a lot, but my, I think my best events are 
the 100 back and the 200 free. What are you, what is the team's strongest event? Um, well, I can't really say which the strongest event is because um, we have a lot of strong swimmers this year, and and in their own events, like their best events, we usually dominate in all of them. So. <laughs> How do you compare this year's team to last year's? Um, <laughs> there's a big difference. I think last year and in the years past, um, since I was a freshman, our team hasn't been serious and. They kind of never never came to practice and weren't dedicated at all. And this year, we got in a lot of freshmen who are on outside swim teams, which helps a lot. And um, the team became a lot more unified and a lot more serious. And the coach this year decided that she was going to become a lot stricter, and therefore a lot of the unserious people quit, which really helped our team. And last year, Allie Buckley won the state title in diving. Do you think she can repeat that? Yeah, she's um, been dominating in diving ever since she was little. And um, she swims, I mean, she dives in New York with a team there. And uh, yeah, she'll, I definitely think she can um, take the state title again because of um, she's young and she's ambitious. And she's, she has really high standards for herself when she dives. Thank you very much and good luck. Thank you. <laughs> and back to Dave. Thank you, Tony. Due to sloppy ball handing and lack of concentration, the boys' basketball team ended the month on a sour note, with a tough loss to Union Catholic, followed by a heartbreaker in Plainfield by one point. The boroughs' basketball team had a terrible time in Linden, despite a game-high 32 points by junior Jen Fears, losing 60-41. to 41. The Suburban News released its second annual All Suburban News Area Football High School Team. This list was made to acknowledge the best football stars within our area. Players mentioned from Scotch Plains Fanwood High were quarterback Ricky Johnson, tackle Maurice Owens, nose tackle Nick Nitty, and linebacker Phil DeFalco. Lastly, going back to wrestling, the wrestling team had a late match against Rawway. Nick Nitty was the star, leading off with an impressive throwdown. Right here we have Tony Cucurillo. And Anthony's able to turn him on his back. Let's see if Chesslin can get a pin here. Keep him down there. Yes, there it is. Try to take him down again. Just under 50 seconds left in the second period. Oh, nice takedown. But he just kept the single leg. Let's see if he can, if he can drive to his chest. He's got him on his back again. Yes, Keep him in bounds. Keep him in bounds. If they can just pull him in bounds, or if he can stay in bounds and stop. You know, he's definitely over He's working for a pin. He looks like he's got him here. He's pretty immobile. He's, there it is. Six more points for Scott Plain as Nick Nitty comes through with a pin. Good wrestling there by Nick Nitty, an excellent wrestler. Good, good job there. It's low. See if he can pin him here. He's got 10 seconds to get him pinned. Just try to lie right on his shoulder. Get that shoulder down. Oh. He's, he'll be awarded the superior decision. Even with an impressive outing by the two, the boys' wrestling team went on to lose. Back to Eugene. Thanks, Dave. Our investigative reporter, Tony Critelli, hit the high school again with another insightful investigation this month. This time, he ferreted out rule breakers using illegal electronic devices. Here's his report. This is Tony Critelli for Channel 34 News on another monthly investigative report. This month, we'll look into the illegal use of Walkmans in school. Here in the independent study area, 
in the library we see a, a juvenile wearing a Walkman when he's not supposed to be. Let's go and take his Walkman away. Take that off. You're not supposed to have these in school. Give them back, man. They're supposed to be confiscated by Mr. Arico and not given back till the end of the year. Well, no, I mean, nobody even pays attention to that rule anyway, so... This is the library. This is a private library. You're supposed to be quiet in here. Oh, give me a break. I Can't mean... you tell you're disturbing everybody? Yeah, I think you're making more noise than I am. So I think we should go down to Mr. Arico. Come oh, on. Oh, give me a break, man. What are you talking about? Come on down to Mr. Arico. They come in here with your stupid camera. What grade are you in? Senior, man. You've been in this school for four years already and you still don't know this rule? Give me a break, man. I mean, it's just a form of entertainment. Form of entertainment, but you're disturbing everybody. We're even in the halls. You're not even supposed to have this in the halls. Look, man, you're the one who dragged me into the halls. Take me down to Mr. Rico. Jeez, well, that's where you're supposed to go. That's yeah. where you're supposed to yeah. be. What kind of authority do you have? I'm like... <laughs> You're like Geraldo Rivera is what you're like. That's right. You're... Thanks, Tony. That's the January edition of 34 News. Thank you and goodbye.